Hey there, do you dream of escaping into a book? Maybe your escape includes a cozy cabin in the mountains or a magical town along the coast. Either way, you're in the right place. Welcome to Literary Escapes with me, Becky. This year on the podcast, we're exploring the United States. So every week I'm going to bring you a new book set in a different state. So let's see where we're going today. Welcome back to the Literary Escapes podcast. I am Becky, and we are continuing our trek across the United States through our books. This week, we are visiting the beautiful state of North Carolina, and our tour guide is author Nancy Robards Thompson. Welcome, Nancy. Hi, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here today. It is so fun to have you, and I looked it up because my memory is horrible, It was August of 2021 that you were in my book club last time, and we talked about your book, Lost in Paris. Yes, so that was, that was, um, that was a a really fun book. It's under the name of Elizabeth Thompson, but if anybody wants an escape to Paris, I highly recommend that one. Um, so it's been a few years, so Wow. (laughs) So thank you for joining us on our romp around the country this year. Thank you for having me. So you are our tour guide for North Carolina. My experience with North Carolina is um, mostly the Outer Banks because we have been there. Gosh, probably since 2001, we have gone every other summer to somewhere along the Outer Banks. And um, my kids grew up doing that. That's like what they know as far as vacations. Ah, and the so, family vacation, right? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. There, it so. is. But there's this whole rest of the state that includes mountains and cool little towns. And exactly. So, and yeah. I'm going to some places you've probably never been so because my experience is mostly in western North Carolina so very um, cool okay yeah so so yeah it's a it's really um you know I'm I'm I I grew up as we were talking earlier I grew up in Florida so and we've been in um in this area for about seven years now almost seven years nice and what I love, I love this. We get the seasons here, you know, in, in Florida, as you know, it's we like have, one season. <laughs> have one season, exactly. <laughs> with minor variations, but in, now I understand what springtime is about. It's oh. just, we have some cherry trees in our backyard and they are just magnificent. And so, so now That's it's like so cool. it used to, fall used to be my favorite season and it still is sort of, you know, just because it's, I don't know, it's, it's, I, the weather's getting cooler now, but now I'm like, ah, oh, spring is kind of edging in there, you know, when the yeah. cherry trees. but, but yeah, it's really neat. We've got the, um, the Blue Ridge mountains in this area and they are yeah. just breathtaking and they are just, just really nice. So we traded the, the beach for the mountains and, yeah. um, you know, not I, I a bad it. trade, <laughs> not a bad trade, not a bad trade, not at all, not at all. So it's fun. It, it makes for some really good hiking and so forth. And we are very close to Asheville, which is probably one of my favorite places around here. And, you know, of course it has the, the Biltmore Estate, which I'm kind of obsessed with. We go there several times a year. And, That's so and awesome. Okay. So much history, you know, just so much history. But one of the things that I really love about this area and specifically the small towns that I'm going to talk about is there's a lot of literary history around here, which is just really wild. Yes. Yes. And so the more I, the more I learn, the more I, I want to learn. You know, so the more I, up. So in, um, in, well, let's start with Asheville. Um, Thomas Wolfe, who wrote the, you know, many novels and um, Look Homeward Angel was one of his, um, his, his most famous. Um, he was born in Asheville wow. in 1900, right? He was. And Zelda and Scott F. Scott Fitzgerald spent a lot of time here. Um, okay. In fact, it's kind of interesting because, you know, Thomas Wolfe was born here and Zelda actually died in Asheville, North Carolina. Sadly, it was tragic, wow. but, um, F. Scott Fitzgerald, her husband, actually spent two summers in Asheville. He came, he, he came here because uh, he had tuberculosis and it, the mountain air. It had a reputation at that time as like a really good healing place for healing, yeah. good for breathing, mountain air and so forth. So he was here. He first came in the summer of ni- 1935 and then came back in 1936 and he brought his wife Zelda 
um, with with him. And I don't know um, how much you know about Zelda, but she you know she was a flamboyant character, and she had some some mental health challenges. Yeah. She had been diagnosed as a schizophrenic, and interestingly enough, she would probably be considered um, bipolar today. Okay. So, but they labeled her as, you know, as having schiz um, uh, chronic schizophrenia. So he uh, had learned, he, um, F. Scott Fitzgerald had learned about this place called Highlands Hospital, which was a progressive, they treated with, you know, just fr like fresh air, like he was treating himself, you know, yeah. for the tuberculosis, getting out and marching and diet and so forth. So she was in Highlands Hospital and really she was there on and off. Um, from 1936 to the rest of her life in 1948. So wow. when she tragically died in a fire. So oh, um, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. That was that was really yeah. That was that was um, um, very very sad. So but um, while she was at Highland Hospital, he stayed at the Grove Park Inn, which I love to go there. They've got this fabulous um, uh, outside area called the the Sunset Terrace, and you can have mm. lunch lunch there. And I, I believe they serve dinner. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> We've always had lunch there. <laughs> this magnificent view of Asheville because it's uh, up, you know, up, but you can look out and you can see the mountains and you can see the downtown Asheville area, just like off in the distance and all. And so it sounds really, stunning. It is. It it sure is. So so that's one of my favorite places. And then um, just on down the road a little while, uh, um, a little ways is a place called Tryon, North Carolina. And it was home to um, this, the fabulous singer and songwriter, Nina Simone. Um, her I don't, yeah, I don't know that name. Nina, oh, you've got to listen to her music. She is just, I even get goosebumps, you know, thinking, thinking about it. But um, her childhood home is there and it's being renovated and made into, um, I believe it's, it may even be like a national historic. We, um, we actually drove by there and looked in the looked in the windows and, and so forth and um, have supported that that effort. So and then the mystery this is a little this is close to my heart the um, the mystery cozy mystery writer um, Lillian Jackson Braun who the author of the the Cat Who series yes she lived in try little tiny Tryon and isn't that our, funny wow isn't that fun? and our buddy F Scott Fitzgerald <laughs> lived there um, in the um, Oak Hall Hotel in January of, of 1937. Now rumor has it, okay, he spent, well, he did spend six months there and he wrote some short stories while he was waiting for a job offer from MGM Studios. But rumor has it, he was also sort of trying to dodge some creditors because he was a little strapped for cash at the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. so then um, in that general area, Carl Sandburg, the poet lived in Flat Rock and, nice. um, and which um, is, I, I, I just have to throw this in, Flat Rock is just not too far from Bat Cave, North Carolina, which <laughs> I haven't been there yet, but you know, with a name like Bat Cave, I, I, we have to go. <laughs> that seems like somewhere you need to be, yeah. <laughs> I know, exactly. And then I there's the Brevard, Brevard, North Carolina that has a wonderful music center. And then a little town called Saluda, North Carolina, that's just, just, I don't know, it's just, it just has a really neat feel to it. We go to a restaurant there called the Purple Onion and Oh, it's just it's a it's a lot of fun so and then I just went on further um it's it's still western but up north <laughs> in North Carolina western North Carolina is Beach Mountain and I just went to a, a writing retreat there which was just so much fun this was in um in June late June when you know how hot it's been this year mm -hmm. uh the cabin didn't have air conditioning and it was comfortable it was because oh. it's it, can't remember what the elevation is. I should have, I should have checked that out, but it was, we had the, um, the windows open and it was one, one day it got a little chilly actually. <laughs> this is really a good escape. <laughs> so, That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. So those are some of my favorite places. That's so cool. And being in the mountains, just that in and of itself, for me, especially is such a different life um you know everything in florida as you well know is flat and <laughs> you know you're gonna run into the beach regardless of which way you go pretty much and so yes. the idea of looking out and seeing mountains is i love that that's such a such a cool thing and i know from having lived in colorado for a few years that there are some really cool mountain towns and um 
I can't remember where I was driving to, but I remember going through, I think it was the Blue Ridge, um, going up to Ohio, maybe from Florida. And we stopped along the way at some craft type stores in just these little towns along the way. And I have a blanket still that I bought there. It's, they it's are, a little they, ragged they, now, but I love it. Yeah, they're just really neat. And that yeah. actually plays a part in um, my book, um, Sleigh Bells Ring, which we'll talk about later, yeah. which is um, the first book in the in the Wedding Bell Mystery Series. It's, um, it is set in Brevard. Well, it's set in Hemlock, Hemlock, North Carolina. Which yeah. Is but I based it on my experience um, with um, Brevard, North Carolina. And there is, there's this, this the, ro- the main road that goes, you know, kind of like goes alongside of the mountains. There are all of these little, art, you know, little artisan yeah. stores and stuff yeah. like that you can stop at and, you know, like a pottery place. And I, I have some of that for local color in. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. I love that. In the, okay. In the Wedding Bell series. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really neat. So some really nice, nice, um, you know, hand, hand, um, handmade. Yeah. Uh, and you don't get that a lot anymore. And so I respect that people still have the skills to make really cool things um yes right and that you can go into the store now it seems yeah. like most things like that are on etsy or something like it right like right you i mean i like to i'm a very tactile visual it. person so touching and feeling are um i like that and being able to wander around a store there's that's awesome that's always a ton of fun so Same very cool here. yeah yes. north carolina sounds like a place that we all definitely need to visit and Yes, yes, yes. There's so, obviously I, a lot of really great colleges up in that area. And yes, yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. You know, University of North Carolina and Brevard that I was speaking about just a moment ago. Um, there's Brevard College, which is just a really neat little, you know, um, um, learning, learning institution. So yeah. Neat. Also in um, the Raleigh-Durham area, not too long ago. That's a that, great area. That's a fabulous area. Yeah. So it was, it was, um, yeah, yeah, it was, it's, it's, so it's got, you know, it has all kinds of different little Mm -hmm. enclaves and and different flavors and so forth, but I like that. That's one of the things that I've been picking up on as doing all these author interviews with, you know, about all the different states in the country. Cause I, I, I think I visited maybe 39 states out of the 50. And so I feel like I'm doing pretty good, you know. You are. But of course, visiting a state, it's usually like a city, not necessarily the state. (laughs) And, (laughs) And so it's been really interesting to hear these completely different perspectives than mine on these states, on, on all these different states and learning just how incredibly diverse not only our country is, but all these different states are. And uh, that's been such a fun experience for me. Oh, that's a neat, it's what a neat, what a neat project too. You yeah, know, it's to, been to, um, a huge or, one, but it's been a ton of fun. And uh-huh. I've read so many great books and met so many great authors and it's, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So now one of the things I'm curious about, and I love to, I love hearing authors answer this question because it's, again, it's a very diverse one, is um, how you became an author. And in looking through your history, you were in television and movies, fashion industry, public relations, journalism, and somehow from all of that, you became an author. So I want to hear this story. (laughs) (laughs) I was a journalism major in college, and I actually did. Um, I was a stand-in, believe it or not, on the new Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> that was like, That's awesome. At, at MGM Studios, yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun. And, and when I was in, when I was in college, and um, and it paid well, and you know, it was kind of fun to be just around that whole that whole thing because they had you know some famous guest artists and so forth and all. So, but that I back did, I when uh, what was it Brittany and Timberlake yes, were yeah, in it. it? that it was that yes that that <laughs> crew, that crew right there yeah the 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 it was so you know who knew christina aguilera started there ryan right. gosling and, and uh, okay you know, how funny for the think boys and so forth and it was yeah it was quite quite amazing so yeah and they were just little kids <laughs> 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 um, but hard yeah, to even so imagine funny. now isn't it wow i know I know exactly. 
So yeah, so I was a journalism major and went to the University of Central Florida and then um, worked in um, worked as a newspaper reporter. So I've, I've really always written. Mm. Um, I used to write in diaries and journals and so forth. And you know, it's funny though, because I never really thought about writing a book. Isn't yeah. I just, I, You know, it just didn't, and, until one day I was reading, uh, just, you know, writing, you know, j- just writing in general. Um, just, I always used to look at um, Writer's Digest magazine. And there was a, there was a, um, an, an interview with Nora Roberts and she was um, um, singing the praises of the Romance Writers of America and how it's really helped a lot of writers get published and something just clicked. I thought, wow, okay, I'm going to check this out. And sure enough, you know, at the time Central Florida had a, the Central Florida Romance Writer. So I went there and I really felt like I found my home. That is so, so cool. So it's, you know, it, it, it really, and it was a, it was a, a complete, education because even though I had a degree in journalism which is writing yeah. um writing a novel is it's so very different, different from, type of writing yes. Yeah. yes so and in the um sort of backtracking a little bit here I decided I worked for two different newspapers and really decided that I just did not care for reporting the facts I even had one one of my editors my last editor at the, la- at the um, last newspaper that I worked for, it said, I don't want you to be creative. I just want you to report the facts. <laughs> just like, report the facts. Oh, like, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's no fun. That's you know? not so, any fun. Not that I would, no, not that I would have embellished, but at right, least, right. you know, like, you know, because I mean, you when you are, you've been, you're supposed to have journalistic integrity and such. But um, so I actually ended up going into um, public relations. I got a job in public relations where the, you know, you can make up stories. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty much a job. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, it was, um, um, so it was for a group of retirement communities in the air and and actually throughout the whole state. And so it was a big, it was a big job, but the more, the more I wrote, you know, like the, you know, fiction, I started out just with an idea for a story. Of course it was set at the beach, you know, and, um, and being encouraged and learning through RWA, I entered their Golden Heart contest, which was it was um, I'm not sure. I know RWA RWA's had some some you know some ups and downs, right? And I know they're trying to reorganize now. And I I want to say that possibly they've reinstated the Golden Heart, but I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. You know, I wouldn't take my life on it. But okay. um, what the Golden Heart was was a um, a contest for unpublished writers, and. The first round was ju- is judged by your peers, and then the second round is judged by editors. So okay. um, I actually I actually final. That was one of four finalists. Um, That's amazing. That year. So I was really it was it was it was it was it was like wow okay <laughs> I didn't win did not win um, and that manuscript ended up not being published. Okay. Uh, for, for good reasons, you know. But I but I kept writing. So I kept well, writing. It, it gave you information that you can do this and that you can let other people read your book and they like it, you know? I mean, that's, that's a lot of really good information. It was validating. It yeah. really was. It's, it's, as you, you know, you know, writing's a solitary, for the most part, solitary endeavor. And sometimes you're like, why am I doing this? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hollering down a black, you know, like a, you know, like an, into the abyss or, you know, exactly. Um, so, so it was, it was validating. So then I entered again in 2022 and I won, believe it or not. And um, I did end up later down the road, I ended up revising that manuscript into more of a women's fiction type of story. And okay. it ended up, ended up being published as a book called Sisters. And okay. so I've recently gotten, and I've gotten, rece- I've got my rights back to that. So I'm going to be actually um, independently publishing that one again. So oh, yay. Updated and, and so forth, and probably retitled because yeah, to do that when you, <laughs> you know, but, yeah, so, yeah. So then I, um, so but I was working, working part, you know, and I we had our, our family was young and so forth, and so but I was really determined, so determined to sell to Harlequin. I just wanted to sell so badly, wanted to sell to Harlequin, and ended up selling. I at one point I had three books under consideration with them, and I was targeting a specific line, okay, and um kept getting the most wonderful revision letters here just fix fix this then you know and then I'd get it back and this was over a period of about three years and 
the wine ended up being discontinued before. Oh, <laughs> so, no. Oh, gosh. Man. Is this ever going to happen? But I, but um, through, because I had won the Golden Heart, I was able to get an agent and she was just wonderful. She had faith in me and took me on before I was published. And okay. um, she, you know, I just said to her, I said, you know, I said, I still love Harlequin, but right now I feel like I need to write something that would not be published by them. No, no disrespect to Harlequin, but you know, right. it's like I waited so long, so long. And now all of a sudden I'm back to square one. So I wrote a book, uh, a women, uh, it was a chick lit book, you know, <laughs> back, when back in the day. Was, yeah. <laughs> day, yeah. <laughs> And it sold to a small press, um, wow. um, Thorndike Thorndike Gale Press. Um, okay. They've been there for their five star imprint, and that was my first sale. And then um, the editor who I worked with, he said, "You know, what do you want to do next?" And I had it in my head that I was going to do a sequel to for one of the characters in the book, and he was like, "No, I don't think so." He goes, "I don't think people really want to know about her story." And I was like, "I I want to write it." Exactly. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> so you know, I was kind of like. He goes, no, he goes, I want you to like, really like look inside yourself and tell me, what do you really want to write? Well, I had been, um, one of my side interests is art. I love to paint and I'm enamored by the French impressionist painters. And I said, all right, you want to know what I really want to write? Here you go. It's completely different from the first book. And, um, and it was, a um, kind of in the vein of girl with a pearl earring, but it was okay. about two of the French Impressionist painters, Edward Manet and Bert Morceau, their, their relationship, which is, you know, they were very close and okay. there's been a lot of speculation. So I researched, I had been researching that and it had been about four years. That was just kind of my fun project. Like, mm -hmm. this is really interesting. And the more I dug, the more I, you know, it was like, oh, this is, this is a good story. So um, we have, my Central Florida Romance Writers happened to have this editor bring this editor in for this thing that we call the super super saturday which is where we've got this editor who basically you know speaks to the to the chapter for right. a whole set. and um so this this conversation actually took place because he was you know in, in person with him i should i should have told you that that first anyway so so i go home that to, dropped him off at his hotel i went home <laughs> and stayed up all night long putting together a proposal like the first three chapters and the synopsis and I'm so I'm like bleary I think I got I like bet one, one hour sleep and we still had another like day for full this, day of yeah full day of things so I'm like you know like <laughs> you know like running on adrenaline and coffee so I go and for I sure. pick it up he gets in the car. He's got a grumpy look on his face. He gets in the car and um, I, I hand him the proposal and he, he looks at it and he frowns at me and he just like pushes it away. He goes, I don't know what that is, but I need coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's what, okay. I that's what I really want to write. So, but come <laughs> find out, I guess the, the hotel where he was staying was a, a nice hotel, but there's a train that runs behind it. So he had been. Oh no. Like, awake off and on like every time the train would go through so so yeah so so that would but I broke a rule there you're really because what's he supposed to do carry this big packet home with him so he later he said um mail it to me that was before before you really emailed things too he said so, this yeah. was far so he said mail it to me and um I did and and he bought the book so it was that is so cool super exciting so um but then I was also working. The one thing I learned is that is that you, you just keep working on projects. You just keep yeah. working on projects after the other. You know, if one doesn't sell, um, you just keep moving on. So I had written another women's fiction book. And as luck would have it at this time, Harlequin was opening a line of women's fiction um, that okay. they were trying to model after their category romance model, but with women's fiction. Okay. And I was one of... I ended up being one of their, it was, the, the line was called Next, and N-E-X-T, Next, and, um, and I was one of their launch authors, so they bought my book, and, and then that I went on to sell, oh gosh, 40, am I working on my 42nd, 40, 41st or 42nd book, 41st, I believe, for, um, for Harlequin, so wow. I've written 52 books in all, so. That is amazing, I love that. Thank you. What a, Thank the you. thing that, um, <clears throat> It is so interesting that I'm not sure if readers get is that you might get a contract with a publisher, but that doesn't necessarily equal a career. 
<laughs> no. It, yeah, and it's, it's a continual hustle, if you will, of yes, yeah. Yeah, trying to get the, the next contract or, you know, the next exactly. agent or the next editor or whatever. It's, it's rarely into, you know, especially in the beginning, it's rarely, oh, thank God I got a contract. I'm good. <laughs> It never is. In fact, the only constant is is change and, and nothing being constant. Um, for example, my my book Lost in Paris that you were talking about. Um, I was just oh, I was so so thrilled because this was an the an editor that I had wanted to work with for years and years and years bought that book. Oh no, and yeah. She um she was kind of a legend in publishing and okay. so I. I she bought the book in September, had, um, we went to contract, but she had asked for some revisions. And she said, do you think you could have it to me by like the first of November? And I was like, you bet I can, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, so I started, I wrote and got it into her early and didn't hear from her, didn't hear from her. My agent finally was in touch. And then um, on November the 22nd, I heard that she was leaving <laughs> the company. Uh, so I was an orphaned, orphaned author there yeah. and, and also sad because I didn't get to really get to work with her. And I, it was so, mm -hmm. I was just so, so excited. Missed opportunity so, for sure. That's right. So, hmm. so anyway, I ended up working with a wonderful, wonderful editor there too, but then some changes happened. Um, it was Simon and Schuster and they were, um, it was a gallery. And at the time they were talking about making gallery more of a pop culture imprint. Okay. And they said that they didn't have, you know what I mean? So it was like, again, I was, you know, displaced. So you, you have to really, you can't, you can't, re even when you, you finally get a chance to work with your dream editor, you, you know. <laughs> Don't relax. Yeah. yeah. Don't relax. <laughs> Well, and that's, so, yeah, it's so interesting because like you said, change is the only constant that you can, you know, that you can bank on is, you know, cause I've heard that before, you know, from other authors is, you know, they'll get the contract, they'll get in with an editor and then the editor leaves and the next editor may or may not want to work with it. And it's exactly. And it's subjective. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, it's there, there are so many good writers out there mm -hmm. who have written and written and submitted and just for some reason have not connected yet right. with the right editor who gets your voice. It's almost like the stars and the moon have to be aligned. Yeah. You know? I mean, and maybe you can do a, a lot, lot of, of luck. You know? I don't know, but yeah. You, you know, it could be something as simple as you could, you know, submit a book that has a protagonist who's a football player and maybe the editor hates football or had a bad experience right with right like something something like that yeah okay. nope no, nope sorry <laughs> yeah 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 exactly. crazy so crazy you just have to keep going though just keep keep one right after the other and the good thing is too is even if a manuscript is rejected it doesn't mean it, they don't have expiration dates they can be dated where you right. might have to update but keep it and you know if you meet an editor in person know. and they're hey you know i'm really looking for a manuscript with a story centered around a football player hey i've got it i happen to have <laughs> one yeah <laughs> that's so fun huh always crazy yeah. that is for sure and is. you know before you know it you're at 52 books and still still writing still loving it so that's a pretty yeah, yeah. But, pretty you know, amazing now, thing in talking about the editors leaving, my editor, I have worked with my editor at Harlequin, who I adore for 20 years, believe it or not. Wow. We just this past May um, celebrated 20 years of working together. So, and she's fantastic and I adore her. So, so sometimes, you know, sometimes fairy tales do come true. You know? <laughs> so, I love that. I so, yeah. love that. That's awesome. So wedding bell mysteries, cozy yeah. mysteries. That I love cozy mysteries and I, they are so fun. And so tell us about how this came about and all about that series. Oh my goodness. Well, um, 
I had, um, I love, I love the Hallmark channel, of course, you know, and who doesn't, <laughs> I know, exactly. but you know, they had, had some really great, um, cozy mystery series, you know, like the Aurora Tea Garden series that had been running and, um, the Hannah Swenson, um, uh-huh. you know, series and all, and I would eat those up and they just, they just made, I just, they were, to me, they were so much fun. And at the time I was also, I was really into a mystery kick at the time. Mm -hmm. There's an, um, a series called, not on Hallmark. This is a different, it's a little bit grittier. It's the, um, inspector, um, Guido Brunetti series. It's, it's an interesting, I've heard of that one. Yeah. The woman, Donna Leone, um, is American, but she has lived in Venice for a long time. So these, the series is set in Venice and I love, love, love Venice. I, it's, it, it rivals Paris as my, it's my. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My Venice is pretty amazing. Yeah. It is. It, yes, it is. And so there was a TV series that was done by a German company. So we've got an American writer who lives in Venice <laughs> and a German television production, you know, production, um, producer and they made the series that was actually subtitled in, in uh, or I mean in, in the German language so oh. it's really interesting but I devoured it and then I started and they're all books and, and she has oh my goodness is it 28 books 30 books something like that in the series wow. and so, so all of a sudden again it's just like a light bulb went up and I'm like you know what after all of these you know women's fiction books and romance stories yeah. and so I want to write I want to try my hand in a mystery yeah so I had written some, um, some, some romance for, um, some romance stories for Thule, Thule Publishing, a a boutique publisher out of of California. And, um, at one of the RWA conferences, I spoke with Jane Porter and Maggie Marr and said, Hey, I have this idea. Would you give me, would you give me, would you let me try, you know, because I hadn't written it and I didn't know if it was going to you know, fail or what, but I had this idea. So my daughter, I am, I have, um, my husband and I have one child, our daughter, and she and I are super close and we're, we, we always love that, that television show, the Gilmore girls. Yeah. And so, um, my daughter and I had at one point when she was in, gosh, I guess in, in, um, middle school, we had plotted out like a, like a young adult series together. Okay. And she was busy, you know, and she needed to do her thing as a, as a kid. Sure. So forth, but, but I waited for her on that. And then <laughs> when she was in high school, she was like, mom, I got to tell you, she goes, I don't think I really want to be a writer. So I don't oh, think no. I wanna... like, you can go ahead with it if you want to. So I had been looking because we had the series pretty well plotted out. It was, it was fun. That's really and cool. Then somehow though, I went from that and it kind of morphed into the kind of the bare bones of what I could use for the wedding bell series. So I, I like huh. I, I like to liken it as Gilmore Girls meets Murder She Wrote. So <laughs> nice, okay. <laughs> so the mom is a uh, the Maddie Maddie Bell is her name, and she owns a a bridal boutique. And the daughter, who is um, grown her grown her grown daughter, has an event planning company, and so they work together. Oh and, yeah, okay. You know, so it works well. But to kind of add a little twist, and um, and all Maddie the the mom is also also writes cozy mysteries so <laughs> nice so I have this idea for you know in planning she comes um the daughter comes back she she went to the University of North Carolina comes back and opens her event business working out of her mom's bridal shop so she gets this big gig this really important gig it's like the um you know, like the wedding of the, of the season for Hemlock, little Hemlock, North Carolina. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, um, but it happens to be, um, her ex-boyfriend who is from a, a rather affluent family. And, uh, okay. So, so cutting to the chase of not giving away anything, the, the, uh, morning of the wedding, he's disc- he's found dead and she is, she, the daughter is basically accused of the wedding. So it's like, you know, it's like, it's one thing to write a cozy mystery, but when it hits this close to home, the mystery's not so cozy. So you, so you solve, you jump in and you solve it. So it's yeah. all about the mom basically defending the daughter, you know, like helping to, to free the, the daughter and figuring out who, who, who killed um, Riley Buxton. <laughs> so, nice. Okay. <laughs> that's fun. I love that about cozy mysteries is there's always the the need to prove either yourself or someone else innocent and 
you know, you got to get in the way of the police because that's just how it works. <laughs> right. That's right. A little bit of, you know, you got to, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit, but you also, yeah. you know, I find that I have to try to put some reason in there that she would jump in in the middle of it. Of know? course. So, yeah. So, you know, when your daughter is, you know, when your daughter's accused, you're going to, you're going like, to jump oh, in. Oh, she didn't do it. You know, and I, no, no, so. I'm going to sit back and let the police handle this. <laughs> no mom ever. <laughs> no, it's like, who did this? You know? so they, <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. and, and I figured too, that since she was a, she's a cozy mystery writer herself. So she's kind of, she kind of has that curious nature. Yeah. And her brain thinks of ways, you know, different ways yeah. things could happen. And I like right. that. So, and the daughter can, of course, let her mom like wander into trouble. She has to, she's always, she's always trying to, she's almost like the Watson to, to the, you know, Watson. Right, Sherlock. right, right. <laughs> so, That's awesome. How so, fun. Thanks. Thank you. So it is, it's fun. And the series, I don't know if you knew this, but the series has been optioned for, oh, um, nice. for television. So we're still waiting to hear more. So That's exciting. Holy moly. It is. It's really, yeah, it's, it's super, super exciting. So I'm um, kind of. Wow holding my breath, waiting, you know, a lot of books are option, but you know, right. Yeah. You know, so I, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck. I hope that that goes through. Cause like you said, Thank a lot you. of books are optioned. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So this one is, um, it was optioned by Candy Rock Entertainment um, for the great American family. So it's okay. similar, similar to what's to the Hallmark thing. And I know yeah. that they're really, really looking to build their, what they're calling their great American mysteries. So um, as a, kind of a little like an imprint within there you know within their great american family so, so i hope <laughs> yeah well good luck i look forward to hearing how that goes that'll be fun to watch thank you well very good well thank you nancy for joining us and being our fabulous north carolina tour guide this has been a really fun catch-up with you this has been so much fun becky thank you thank you for for, for having me here today it was yeah it was so it's you. been a great pleasure Thanks for joining me today. If you'd like to be part of the Read Across the U.S. Book Club, I'd love to have you join us. There is a link in the show notes. So just head down there and click and we will welcome you in. So see you in the book club, I hope. Have a great day and we'll see you next week with a new episode.